What's up everybody, it's Man of Low Moral Fiber here, my name's Luke, and I'm taking a look today at the Scorpio as part of my Does It Suck series. This is a weapon you guys have recommended, and it is a quest reward for going around Sanctuary and telling everyone that Roland has unfortunately passed away in the effort to bring down Handsome Jack. This is a unique doll assault rifle, and its special effect is that it has a large and variable burst size. If we go ahead and shoot it here, that first burst was five shots. This next one was six. And I've seen it go as high as a nine shot burst and as low as a four shot burst. Obviously, um, the average is going to be somewhere in between that. I would say that the average is probably either six or seven shots in the burst. And if you look at it compared to a very similar looking doll assault rifle, the Defender, because that's the doll assault rifle with the Jacobs barrel, it looks about the same, but the Defender has higher damage between the two. It has negligibly higher accuracy. Um, it has a lower fire rate, and we'll get to that in just a second. Reload speed's the same, and it has five less shots in the magazine than the Scorpio does. The main difference, though, is that the Defender only has a three-round burst, and its three-round burst is fired very, very slowly with a significant burst delay. Now, the Scorpio obviously has a much higher fire rate during the burst and a much smaller burst delay giving it effectively an even more increased fire rate than you see here on the card of 5.7 as compared to 4.5. The Scorpio is actually more in line with the doll minigun. As you can see here, they have a closer to similar damage, and the fire rate on the minigun says it's real high and everything, but it actually has a burst delay that is a little bit higher. Um, this one is always going to have a 9-shot burst, though. However, it is significantly less accurate than a burst from the Scorpio is, or an entire magazine from the Scorpio. You can see there that uh, that spread is a lot tighter than, say, that spread. So I'm going to use it here in the Washburn Refinery where I've tested some other weapons so that you kind of know what the baseline is against these enemies. I'm going to use a Chaotic Neutral Rogue Com to boost the fire rate and magazine size even higher on the Scorpio, and I figured that particular com would help it out quite a bit. I debated using a legendary killer comp, but in my preliminary test, the chaotic neutral rogue comp was actually helping more. So we're going to get started here and try to take out the enemies in the Washburn Refinery in a quick and efficient manner. I did go ahead and just add skill points to precision to increase accuracy, velocity for extra damage, and range. This gun actually has decent range because it is pretty accurate, and velocity is only going to increase that, so it actually makes the gun effective at medium to long range, which I really like in an assault rifle. I also specced into two fang because since it's a doll weapon, the um, second shot isn't really going to throw us off that bad. And because it only has... Um, a decent fire rate, we are going to get that benefit from Two Fang, and that actually makes it more powerful. And that's pretty nice. Go ahead and get these guys slagged here, and then try to get uh, Kunai across them all, and then try to get some good burst shots, or some good burst with boar on these guys. So, one thing right away that you can see about this weapon is that it is pretty solid at uh, knocking the limbs off of enemies. As you can see, I was able to knock down that exploder there. I think this guy's slagged, we'll see. And that's really good for some loaders, like badass loaders and hot loaders, which we're going to see here in just a second. But against some loaders, it can actually make them a little bit more dangerous, surprisingly. Um, against hot loaders, though, their ion blast is a lot less dangerous than their flamethrower hand, so it's definitely a good thing to go ahead and knock the flamethrower hand off. Obviously, against badass loaders with their real high fire rate and everything, that is also the case. Against some loaders, though, um, they actually become a little bit more dangerous offensively when you knock off their arms because then that forces them into continually doing the ion blast, which can actually be pretty dangerous. Looks like we've got uh, a gun loader up here, and that's a decent opportunity to show that uh, the gun actually has decent range which I do like in an assault rifle. It's not something that's super important because obviously it's still going to perform better at medium to a close range, but um, wow, the antagonist actually slags something there. The antagonist is better for slagging yourself than enemies. Anywho, um, it is pretty nice to have an assault rifle that can actually perform decently well at range because a lot of the other assault rifles that we've taken a look at really suffer at range, like the Shredifier and Verrook and the hail, which has obviously kind of a finite range. 
So we're going to get ready to take out this big badass loader here. We'll see if we're able to take him out in a decent amount of time. I think it will be good at knocking his arms off and interrupting his uh, high fire rate. And so that should actually work out pretty well for us. We'll try to avoid his ion blast now that we've knocked off his um, arms. And now that we've got another set of kunai on him, we'll go ahead and finish him off. So it actually worked through the um, badass loader in a decent amount of time. And that's cool. So far, I'd say that this weapon is definitely not up for the sucks category. It's just not great. Um, I would go as far to say that it's not even that good. It's kind of meh. I did use this weapon briefly when I ha um, was working through the game for the first time. Um, both on normal mode and true Vault Hunter mode. Uh, it came at a good time. You get this weapon obviously right after you get through with the angel section if you um, choose to do it at that particular time at least and that's actually a pretty good time to get some weapons because that's when you're about to go into the sawtooth cauldron which can be a very tough area and it's nice to have a good on level weapon for that particular challenge because um, it could come in an element that you might be lacking in your loadout at that particular time and oh, that was a good good punch by that power loader there. I was trying to line these guys up for a uh, couple of four shots here. Excellent. So I was able to take them out. And so that's pretty good. You know, it takes out these guys with decent speed. But like I was saying, you get this weapon kind of at a time where it can definitely be helpful. It's not the most powerful weapon, but it's definitely not useless. And the utility of this weapon might really help you out in your journey. You know, because it comes at a pretty pivotal point in the timeline of the progression of difficulty in the game I'd say because obviously the Sawtooth Cauldron is one of the most difficult parts of the game at least of the vanilla game now this weapon performs pretty damn well against loaders because they have these critical hit spots that are rather large and they're kind of slow moving and everything but um, against some enemies like say rats which have smaller critical hit spots and move around more violently this weapon won't be quite as useful because it's harder to hit those critical hit spots but um, you don't necessarily need to hit criticals with this weapon to kill things like you might with a sniper and so just by hitting enemies it can still deal a decent amount of damage obviously like I was saying it has a fairly weak critical hit modifier so that's something to watch out for but obviously getting critical hits will make it a lot more powerful like any weapon that you know can score critical hits Yikes. That uh, junk loader somehow got unslagged on me. And because of that, he's now pretty dangerous because he's just doing that ion blast over and over again. And he's recovering health via the UVHM health regeneration. So I'm going to go have to kill him here in a second. Excellent. So I killed the first one. Wow, this guy's regenerated almost all of his health. That's not any good. Man, he is being a bitch about getting slagged. That was a good grenade throw by that gun loader when I wasn't looking. That's always aggravating. Uh-oh, we've got the uh, badass loader coming. Hopefully we got one of the variants that isn't too uh, aggressive. Excellent. We'll just watch out for that badass loader while we acquire some grenade ammo here. Not the most accurate of badass loaders. That bodes well for us. We'll try to take him out just like we did the first one by getting slag on him. Getting him kunai'd. And then trying to knock off his arms. This will encourage him to only do his ion blast thing. And since the badass loaders are actually kind of slow at getting their ion blast off, we should be okay there. Excellent. So we're working through these guys. We had a little bit of trouble, ran into that one little problem there, but it wasn't too bad. We're doing okay. We'll work through this next room and see how we do in here. Um, the gun isn't the most ammo efficient in the world, but that is mitigated by the fact that uh, assault rifles have a fairly deep ammo pool. Excellent. 
So we've got uh, two exploders right now. We'll kind of wait for them to do their thing, I guess. Excellent. Now we can continue. Oh, that one was nice enough to drop a grenade for us. That was really cool of him. Kind of an exploder heavy back room right now. We've got a hot loader back there, it looks like, too. So the hot loader is something we're going to have to make sure and deal with. Try to get this guy slagged so we can finish him off. That was kind of the problem earlier. I was damaging enemies without totally finishing them off. That's not something you want to do, especially at Ultimate Vault Hunter mode, because not only do you still leave some enemies shooting at you, um, you give them a chance to regenerate their health. So there's a hot loader back there that we're going to need to deal with. He's kind of pulling himself up to the forefront right now, which is nice of him. Oh, he jumped back down. That was mean of him. Excellent. So we blew him up somehow. I think we might have got some lucky boar action there. Hmm, not sure which one I should take out first. Back up around this corner here, I guess. Use the terrain to my advantage, get to a point where they can't shoot at me too well and I can get a good line of sight on them by making clever use of that railing there. Get that guy slagged. I was kind of hesitant to use my extra last slag grenade there, but I know there's a chest nearby. And maybe he'll drop one for us as well. At least I think there's an ammo chest nearby. I think it's at the top of these. Oh, I still haven't opened this one. So, good stuff all the way around there. And there's one still up here. Excellent. So, we're working through this map. Um, and we can see that we're getting a little bit low on assault rifles. So low that the game decided to give us more assault rifle ammo than grenades. In fact, it didn't give us any grenades at all. Which is pretty tacky, but we'll try to deal with that. Here's what I was talking about, about the gun being decent at range. That's actually really nice. Get slag on this guy here. He's kunai'd as well. Use the ambush bonus to deal a little bit of extra damage to him there. The game is being very, very stingy with its um, grenade drops at the moment. That's kind of lame. It usually doesn't do that. Wow. Very, very stingy. That's three consecutive chests opened with no grenades. And multiple loaders killed no grenades either. That's definitely a rarity. That doesn't happen too often. We'll make do, though. We'll just have to play a little bit more cautiously and do our best not to take damage, I guess. We're taking out these enemies without too much issue, though. This, bu this chest has some grenades for us, so that worked out well. I must be caught on something. But, that was alright. Ah, I could have got around that, I guess. Excellent. So, there you go. There's the Scorpio. Um, I say it doesn't suck. It's not great, though. Um, this is probably going to be where I cut the video off. But, you know, not good, not bad. Just kind of a medium gun. Like a lot of the other guns I've tested. It doesn't suck. It's just not that good. So, there you go. There's a look at the Scorpio. The... Unique doll assault rifle given to you by telling the enemy, or not the enemies, the allies in Sanctuary, I should say, that Roland has unfortunately passed away in the effort to kill Handsome Jack. 
I do like this weapon, um, if only for the fact that it is kind of in, rem in remembrance of um, Roland, who is a fun character and a character that I miss and everything like that. I wish they didn't have to kill him off, but I will say that it was a good plot move and everything. It made you think that Jack was a very bad guy and definitely advanced the plot quite a bit. So, there's the Scorpio. It's better, you know, um, at low levels because you get it at kind of a pivotal point. And at overpower levels, it lacks a little bit, but it's still a very viable weapon. You can definitely still use it to kill things. As always, guys, I thank you very much for watching. If you haven't yet taken the time to subscribe, please do so. I'd really appreciate that. If you have any questions or suggestions for this series, go ahead and let me know in the comments. I'd appreciate that as well. Otherwise, I do hope to catch you next time. Bye, guys.